If you've been following my channel, you'll have seen me introduce the Cordoba's Handmade Brand. Uh, I introduced that late last year. This is the Cordoba's Capto model, and following their almost bespoke MTO process, you can choose just about anything you like on this boot. So let's look at all the choices and what this boot is like. G'day, welcome to Bootlosophy and my name is Tech. I'm recording in Perth in WA and I acknowledge the traditional custodians of these lands, the Wajit people. This is the Cordobes cap toe boot. I've previously reviewed the plain toe version that they make, which they call the service boot, and you can check that out up here. I'm going to take you through the makeup of this boot, but I'd also like to take some time to explain the almost bespoke nature of their MTO process and step out the many choices that you can make when you're ordering this boot. I will also leave a link to their website below so that uh, you can play around with the different choices and get an idea of the variations of, of this and this service boot. But before we go on, while I'm giving you what I believe to be an honest pros and cons review, know that these boots were given to me for review and that I have a preference to support small brands. So if you do detect any bias, know those two facts. The style of this cap toe boot, especially in this wide round toe last, looks like a typical work boot. It sits on quite a low sloped block heel, uh, six inches high at the shaft, single piece back stay, and a real cap toe. It seems sturdy enough to be a work boot with the exception of this uh, eco rubber sole, which I'll discuss later. And I think if you chose the commando lugged sole option, you should be able to wear it for light work and stylistically with this round toe box, it's certainly not an office boot. The last has a, a generous and very round toe, almost clown shoe uh, to look at it. For those of you who don't like big chunky round toes, you're gonna hate this. <laughs> but wait, don't forget that you can choose the last this is made from, uh, and instead of this C100 last, you can choose the more almond toe shaped D25 last. Uh, the last is a boot shaped mold like this vintage one. You may not have thought of it, but it's quite obvious when you see this, that the last shape dictates how the finished boot is going to look as you pull the uppers over the shape. When I ordered this boot, I chose the chunkier C100 last, and note that I could have gone with a sleeker D25 last, like the one you see uh, here, on the plain toe service boot by Cordobes. So, as I take you through the construction later, uh, just know that you can order the Cordoba's cap toe boot and end up with a completely different beast from this. Anyway, before I do go into construction, let me run down the choices that you can make. So first of all, when you go into their website, you can choose uh, on-demand boots if you're being overwhelmed by choice. Uh, for US $300, you can get any model that they make uh, on-demand, but in predetermined makeups. Second thing, if you decide to do an MTO order, you can click on the Choose Options box to follow the simple route. And also for US 300, you can choose uh, just between the lasts, the size, and the width. However, if you click on the picture of the boot, the whole gamut of choices opens up to you. You can choose between two lasts and your size and width, which I'll get into later when I talk about sizing. You can also choose the type of outsole between leather, a commando lugged sole, and an eco flat rubber sole. You have four choices of upper uh, leather color, as well as choose between leather finishes uh, between smooth out, rough out, suede, and nubuck. You can choose the tongue color from four different choices. You can also choose the type of construction method between stitch down, Blake rapid stitch, and hand welted although the hand welted option adds 90 US dollars to the cost. You can choose your toe puff between unstructured, celastic, or leather, but again, leather will cost you more, as will choosing a real cap toe uh, as a second, real second layer of leather on top of the, of the toe. You can then specify uh, the edge finish that you want, and you have a choice of cotton or leather laces, uh, but the leather laces will cost more, in my opinion, probably not worth it. 
As you can see, that's why I call it almost bespoke. And the only missing piece is they don't make it to the measurement of your specific feet. As I go through construction, note that the choices I made for this particular pair get them into a US 400 plus cost, 410, 420. Let me talk a little bit about the brand. Cordoba's Handmade Boots was founded in 2023 by Alfonso Ignacio Cortez. Uh, Alfonso comes from San Mateo Atenco uh, in the central state of uh, Mexico in Mexico. Alfonso had a vision of making bespoke shoes uh, and when he realized that he couldn't afford to buy a pair of shoes that were made the way he liked, he thought, I'm just going to make my own. <laughs> so he decided to make his own shoes, started to study the art in 2019. He learned from a tutor who was an artisan footwear maker in San Mateo, and he made several pairs of shoes before he decided to start Cordobes. As he made his own shoes and learned his craft, he realized on watching YouTube videos that there was a potential of making affordable boots for people who wanted a high level of individualized customization. But on starting Cordobes, he decided to focus his efforts on building the business and he hired out the underappreciated artisans of San Mateo for his production. So he delegated the production to his teacher and his teacher's workshop. Uh, and the people there still use traditional handmade methods rather than a, a factory approach. Alfonso says that the San Mateo craftsmen cheapened their work to make shoes affordable for the local market. And so he saw the opportunity to give them a better market where their work could be appreciated. In this way, they could raise the quality of their work beyond the local price demand, and he could also give them a better wage in return. Okay, now to construction. And remember, what I'm describing are the materials and methods that I specifically chose to make this boot. Let me start from the bottom as usual. I chose the uh, eco rubber outsole and the hand welted uh, method of construction. The Eco Rubber Outsole is a local Mexican product, and I think from the feel and look of it, it's probably made up of old tires. It's about five millimeters thick with a very flat profile and horizontal grooves cut into the rubber. The grip is not bad, bearing in mind that it's summer over here in Perth as I record this. So in the dry outdoors on sand and gravel and certainly concrete and grass, grip is very good. It's also soft enough to be comfortable underfoot but there, to misquote Shakespeare, might be the rub. Obviously, a softer compound gives comfort, but I'm not sure how durable this will turn out to be uh, because a softer compound may wear faster. In fact, I, I did take this for a walk along a limestone gravel path, and I need to provide a caveat that the limestone around here can chip into really sharp chunks. But on that gravel path, a piece of uh, rubber was gouged out. In my Cordoba service boot, I chose the leather option and that wore well, so maybe my eco-consciousness in, in this choice was misplaced. The hand-welted form of construction, on the other hand, is terrific. Many people call many things hand-welted. But in this case, what happens is that his craftsman uh, cut a channel in the leather insole through which the welt is hand-stitched to the insole and the uppers. Cowboy boots, for example, use this method of cutting a channel in the leather insole to it attach the welt rather than uh, gluing and sewing a gamming piece to the insole and using that to stitch the welt on. On the outside, the welt is then hand stitched through the welt itself, through the midsole and the outsole. I chose a 270 degree uh, uh, welt so that the heel block is nailed and glued. The heel block itself is made up of several pieces of uh, veg tan leather and you can see that they're cut in such a way as to create a slight slope in thickness from the back to the front. This gives the boot a nice balance when you stand and walk. At the top, uh, the heel top lift is made from the same eco rubber compound and securely uh, glued and then nailed on. The heel block and the natural edge of the sole I chose are all sanded quite nicely. They're finished rugged, but they're finished well. Inside the boot, the insole is veg tan leather as is the midsole, which is about five mils thick, uh, so that with the insole, midsole and outsole, the whole sole construction is about 15 mils thick. I think they also use a cork filler to fill the cavity caused by the welt. And I also think that there's a steel shank in the gap between the heel and the ball of the foot to provide that arch support. Inside, they finish off with a leather comfort heel pad to provide comfort under the heel and also to cover the nails. 
For the uppers, I chose uh, local leather from Mendele's Tannery in the veg tanned natural and made rough out. The rough out is under two millimeters thick and so quite soft, but still pretty supportive. The nap is reasonably well matched from panel to panel, except for the vamp piece uh, of the left boot, which is quite a lot nappier than the other panels on both boots. I don't mind that, this being a work boot style, and even after a few wears, the character of the leather, uh, including some shrunken veins of the animal, are starting to show. The smooth grain side is on the inside, and so it's unlined in the shaft, but I do feel uh, like there's a suede liner in the vamp. The cap toe is a real cap toe, meaning there's two pieces of upper's leather there, not just a cap toe piece that's sewn onto the end of a cut off vamp piece. I chose an unstructured uh, toe box. So in the toe box, there's no other plastic or leather. It's just two pieces of the upper's leather plus the lining leather in there only. Uh, the heel is quite lightly structured and from the way it gives and, and squeaks, I think it's a leather counter. It is protected by a single piece backstay that ends up with a little uh, pull tap, which in my opinion is quite useless. And I prefer not to have it there in my opinion. Uh, there is no suede heel cap on the inside, but I actually don't get any heel slip once the sole has been broken in. The stitching all around, the hand stitching of that welt and the handheld machine stitching uh, on the uppers is really good. It's quadruple stitched uh, at the quarters uh, and the toe cap and the backstay is double stitched. Uh, everything else feels strong and doesn't look like there's any uh, missed or dropped stitches. All pretty clean, all pretty consistent. The hardware, five bright brass eyelets, two slightly antique speed hooks, plus one final eyelet at the top. The eyelets are well fitted, but the speed hooks have the uh, regular star press backing and they do feel quite rough and scratchy. The top of the collar is reinforced with a leather backing. I'll just talk quickly about leather care. You can condition rough out with oils and balms, which will, uh, it will darken and, and change the texture of the rough out. I think on some Pacific Northwest darker colored work boots, that makes sense. But these in the natural veg tan look good in the light natural color. If I condition these at all, I think I would use a spray on suede conditioner just to keep the color and the texture or I guess you can condition the inside of the boot. I'm really tempted though not to condition these at all and allow the dirt and stains and wear to show over that light natural sand color. Uh, where I have taken these, where I have worn these, they did get very dusty though uh, from dry sand and limestone residue. So I've made sure to brush them when I feel that sort of dry dustiness on them. Just keep them clean. As for sizing, the uh, Cordoba's website recommends that you go true to size. Now, I measure a US 8.5 in D width. I usually wear many heritage brands like Red Wing, uh, Wolverine, Truman, uh, Parkhurst, Grantstone, uh, even Thursday in a size 8D or 8 average. In this case, I ordered the 8D and they fit me really well. The important thing is not so much uh, the length as the uh, heel to ball of the uh, foot length. If that matches where uh, the boot is at its widest and it's made to flex, your battle's already won. I appreciate the rounded C100 toe box for comfort, although having said that, I found that the D25 in my service boots comfortable in the toe box as well. Uh, like my leather sole Cordobe service boots like this one, I do like the immediate feedback you get on this eco rubber sole. It's not that I feel every sharp rock, but I do know what I'm walking on and I do feel the ground under my feet. That having been said, the uh, footfall comfort is good. I guess helped by the leather and cork and the softer compound rubber. The shape of the last hugs my heels and waist and is both supportive and comfortable. And breaking in was a breeze. I think helped by the soft leather as well as the construction of the soles. It took about three or four days for the sole to uh, actually break in and, and flex. Maybe not enough yet, but it certainly flex as it's supposed to. And that immediately eliminated any heel slip despite the lack of a suede patch uh, at the heel. Now to value. Um, in this makeup, with all my choices, I think it uh, totted up to US $420. That is a hard market to play in because you're comparing it in this style to Truman boots at US $410 to $490 depending on the leather. 
and mark that Truman uses very good leather from Charles F. Stead, from Seidel and Horween. Uh, another comparison may be to say Grant Stone's brass boot selling for what, $3.95 these days? And they also use great leathers from well-known tanneries. I don't think it would be fair to compare these to P&W brands, which are generally super overbuilt. Uh, but in a different makeup to these, you might compare them to say a Red Wing Iron Ranger US350. So price-wise, they don't seem to compare well. But the others are not hand welted, nor, apart from the Iron Rangers, do they have a real cap toe. So if you take these options off the table, uh, these would be costing US 310, 320 say. So that price comparison starts to get real. That being said, I think these with the real cap toe and being hand welted have a value quite close to that price. You need to be aware, of course, that in making that comparison, this is a locally made outsole compound and a locally tanned leather that's fair to say is no com uh, competition for Halloween, Seidel or Stead. At the on-demand or basic choice MTO price of $299, that's a much better reflection of its value compared to those other brands in the under 400 range. So there you have it. My review of the uh, unique little boot uh, with a ridiculous amount of MTO options that could overwhelm you. I, I think this brand will grow and get better at what it does. If you're interested in this brand, maybe stick with the on-demand or basic MTO choices for now, but keep an eye on this brand and dive into the big choices MTO model later on. Well, I hope you like the review, and if you do, please click on the like button down below. And also, if you're not subscribed, I'd be really grateful if you click on the subscribe button as well. Um, YouTube doesn't advertise who you subscribe to. Until the next time, take care out there, and I'll see you again soon.